Welcome back there, students. It's time for more learning with a video from me, your teacher. How fun. Uh, this will be the first of three videos. Oh, that's right. Three on energy in reactions. Keep in mind, it takes energy to get energy. So let's start by filling in a little bit of less notice. Make sure that you have the ones that look like this with a big reaction on the top. Here we are. Uh, remember, chemical changes are chemical reactions. A little bit of review, make sure you get that in the notes. Anytime we're doing chemical reaction, we're taking some stuff and we're changing it into different stuff. But you'll use the word substances because that's what it says on the screen behind me. Uh, the more technical way of saying it is that one or more reactants change to become the products. And as all things do, these chemical reactions are going to require bonds to be broken or formed. And so it's involving energy. There, we should have all the notes filled in right there above the little reaction. Then you have big pretty reaction. Here it is, pretty cool reaction. You actually saw uh, Bill and I do this with the, uh, with the balloon. So you have hydrogen gas, you have oxygen gas, turns into water. Make sure you label the products and the reactants. Keep in mind that over here, right, we have two H2s for it to be balanced and only one O2, right? We need two hydrogen molecules for every one oxygen, and that's going to yield us two water molecules. You've balanced equations before. Here it is again in picture form. So we have two hydrogen molecules. They're going to bump uglies and attack the oxygen. And as a result, we have two beautiful water molecules as the product. Again, if you have not already labeled your reactants and your products, go ahead and do so. And while you're at it, balance this equation because that's always good form to have a balanced equation. There are two main uh, classifications for a chemical reaction. You've actually been using these words already because I kind of jumped the gun on some of them. Uh, reactions can be put into one of two categories based on uh, their energy, like status, I guess. So we have some reactions that release energy to the environment. We call those reactions exothermic. Exo, like exit, meaning outside, and thermic, like thermodynamics, meaning heat. So we're taking heat and uh, we're putting it out. Great example of this is water freezing. When water freezes, right, the water was a liquid, it's going to a lower energy state as a solid. Remember that releases energy into the environment. There's also reactions that take energy from the environment. They're gonna take energy from their surroundings. Remember Hank Green was talking about uh, surroundings and the system. So uh, exothermic reaction is going to put energy out to the system. The other one is going to take energy from that system, bring it in. We call those endothermic, endo meaning internal and thermic again meaning heat. Great example of this, that's not a reaction but it's water melting. When water melts it goes from a solid to a liquid. The liquid has to be warmer than the solid. It has to be above 32 degrees or zero degrees Celsius if we're keeping it nice and clean and metric. That's going to take heat from the environment. So thawing out water actually chills the environment around it which is uh, one of the reasons why we like putting ice on our skin, right? The, the ice uh, starts melting on our skin makes our skin feel cooler because it's taking energy from our skin into the ice. So you might be asking yourself, well, where does that energy go? So for an exothermic reaction, we're going to have less energy in the products than we started with in the reactants. Remember that energy from the reactants is being released out into the environment. So we have less energy than uh, what we started with. As a result, we say that delta H, or the change in heat, the change in thermal energy, will be negative because we're starting out with more here, we're ending with less, and that's how negative numbers work. Again, the opposite will be happening in an endothermic reaction. In an endothermic reaction, we're going to have more energy in the products than what we had in the reactants, right? We're taking energy from the environment. When we form those reactants, we're adding it to the products, right? We're taking, we're taking energy from the environment. We're adding it into the products. So as a result, delta H will be positive. We're gonna have more uh, energy in the molecules at the end of the process. So we're gaining energy. So the change in thermal energy will be positive. 
Again, when you have your uh, chemical reaction, you've got your reactants on one side and your products on the other side. Keep in mind that in this reaction, where we're putting energy in, right, that is an endothermic reaction. We're adding energy, so we're going to be doing a lot more storing of that energy a little bit later. Keep in mind, if you're seeing this screen, that means you should have the rest of this filled in because I, I, I just said it. I just said it. So with these, what you're going to do, you're going to take these two reactions. You're going to, again, label the products and the reactants. Label the products and the reactants. And then for each one, I want you to also give the E word. Is it exothermic or endothermic? And what is delta H going to be? Is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative? You should be able to fill those in and then raise your hand and have Patterson check them before you turn them in. Otherwise, you might end up getting them back. That actually is the end of the first video. Now, you have a fun graphing assignment. Yay, graphing assignment.